A galvanometer is a type of sensitive ammeter, an instrument for detecting electric current. It is an analog electromechanical actuator that produces a rotary deflection of some type of pointer in response to electric current through its coil. In a magnetic field, galvanometers were the first instruments used to detect and measure electric currents. Sensitive galvanometers were used to detect signals from long submarine cables and to discover the electrical activity of the heart and brain. Some galvanometers use a solid pointer on a scale to show measurements. Other very sensitive types use a miniature mirror and a beam of light to provide mechanical amplification of low-level signals. Initially a laboratory instrument relying on the Earth's own magnetic field to provide restoring force for the pointer, galvanometers were developed into compact, rugged, sensitive portable instruments essential to the development of electrotechnology. A type of galvanometer that records measurements permanently is the chart recorder. The term has expanded to include use of the same mechanism in recording, positioning, and servo mechanism equipment. History. The deflection of a magnetic compass needle by current in a wire was first described by Hans Ersted in 1820. The phenomenon was studied both for its own sake and as a means of measuring electric current. The earliest galvanometer was reported by Johann Schweiger at the University of Halle on 16 September 1820. André-Marie Ampère also contributed to its development. Early designs increased the effect of the magnetic field generated by the current by using multiple turns of wire. The instruments were at first called multipliers, due to this common design feature. The term, galvanometer, in common use by 1836, was derived from the surname of Italian electricity researcher Luigi Galvani who in 1791 discovered that electric current would make a dead frog's leg jerk. Originally, the instruments relied on the Earth's magnetic field to provide the restoring force for the compass needle. These were called tangent galvanometers and had to be oriented before use. Later instruments of the a static type used opposing magnets to become independent of the Earth's field and would operate in any orientation. The most sensitive form, the Thomson or mirror galvanometer, was improved by William Thomson from the early design invented in 1826 by Johann Christian Poggendorf. Thomson's design, which he patented in 1858, was able to detect very rapid current changes. Instead of a compass needle, it used small magnets attached to a lightweight mirror, suspended by a thread. The deflection of a light beam greatly magnified the deflection induced by small currents. Alternatively, the deflection of the suspended magnets could be observed directly through a microscope. The ability to measure quantitatively voltage and current allowed Georg Ohm to formulate Ohm's law, which states the voltage across a conductor is directly proportional to the current through it. The early moving magnet form of galvanometer had the disadvantage that it was affected by any magnets or iron masses near it, and its deflection was not linearly proportional to the current. In 1882, Jacques Arsene d'Arsonville and Marcel de Prez developed a form with a stationary permanent magnet and a moving coil of wire, suspended by fine wires which provided both an electrical connection to the coil and the restoring torque to return to the zero position. An iron tube between the magnet's pole pieces defined a circular gap through which the coil rotated. This gap produced a consistent, radial magnetic field across the coil, giving a linear response throughout the instrument's range. A mirror attached to the coil deflected a beam of light to indicate the coil position. The concentrated magnetic field and delicate suspension made these instruments sensitive. Darsenville's initial instrument could detect 10 microamperes. Edward Weston extensively improved the design. He replaced the fine wire suspension with a pivot, and provided restoring torque and electrical connections through spiral springs rather like those of a wristwatch balance wheel hairspring. 
He developed a method of stabilizing the magnetic field of the permanent magnet, so the instrument would have consistent accuracy over time. He replaced the light beam and mirror with a knife edge pointer that could be read directly. A mirror under the pointer, in the same plane as the scale, eliminated parallax observation error. To maintain the field strength, Weston's design used a very narrow circumferential slot through which the coil moved, with a minimal air gap. This improved linearity of pointer deflection with respect to coil current. Finally, the coil was wound on a lightweight form made of conductive metal, which acted as a damper. By 1888, Edward Weston had patented and brought out a commercial form of this instrument, which became a standard electrical equipment component. It was known as a portable instrument because it was affected very little by mounting position or by transporting it from place to place. This design is almost universally used in moving coil meters today. Operation the most familiar use is as an analog measuring instrument, often called an ammeter. It is used to measure the direct current through an electric circuit. The Darsonville Western form used today is constructed with a small pivoting coil of wire in the field of a permanent magnet. The coil is attached to a thin pointer that traverses a calibrated scale. A tiny torsion spring pulls the coil and pointer to the zero position. When a direct current flows through the coil, the coil generates a magnetic field. This field acts against the permanent magnet. The coil twists, pushing against the spring, and moves the pointer. The hand points at a scale indicating the electric current. Careful design of the pole pieces ensures that the magnetic field is uniform, so that the angular deflection of the pointer is proportional to the current. A useful meter generally contains provision for damping the mechanical resonance of the moving coil and pointer, so that the pointer settles quickly to its position without oscillation. The basic sensitivity of a meter might be, for instance, 100 microamperes full scale. Such meters are often calibrated to read some other quantity that can be converted to a current of that magnitude. The use of current dividers, often called shunts, allows a meter to be calibrated to measure larger currents. A meter can be calibrated as a DC voltmeter if the resistance of the coil is known by calculating the voltage required to generate a full-scale current. A meter can be configured to read other voltages by putting it in a voltage divider circuit. This is generally done by placing a resistor in series with the meter coil. A meter can be used to read resistance by placing it in series with a known voltage and an adjustable resistor. In a preparatory step, the circuit is completed and the resistor adjusted to produce full-scale deflection. When an unknown resistor is placed in series in the circuit the current will be less than full scale in an appropriately calibrated scale con. Display the value of the previously unknown resistor. Because the pointer of the meter is usually a small distance above the scale of the meter, parallax error can occur when the operator attempts to read the scale line that lines up with the pointer. To counter this, some meters include a mirror along the markings of the principal scale. The accuracy of the reading from a mirrored scale is improved by positioning one's head while reading the scale so that the pointer and the reflection of the pointer are aligned at this point. The operator's eye must be directly above the pointer and any parallax error has been minimized. Types Today the main type of galvanometer mechanism still used is the moving coil Darsenville Western mechanism, which is used in traditional analog meters. Tangent galvanometer A tangent galvanometer is an early measuring instrument used for the measurement of electric current. It works by using a compass needle to compare a magnetic field generated by the unknown current to the magnetic field of the Earth. It gets its name from its operating principle, the tangent law of magnetism, which states that the tangent of the angle a compass needle makes is proportional to the ratio of the strengths of the two perpendicular magnetic fields. It was first described by Claude Poilet in 1837. A tangent galvanometer consists of a coil of insulated copper wire wound on a circular non-magnetic frame. 
The frame is mounted vertically on a horizontal base provided with leveling screws. The coil can be rotated on a vertical axis passing through its center. A compass box is mounted horizontally at the center of a circular scale. It consists of a tiny, powerful magnetic needle pivoted at the center of the coil. The magnetic needle is free to rotate in the horizontal plane. The circular scale is divided into four quadrants. Each quadrant is graduated from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. A long thin aluminium pointer is attached to the needle at its center and at right angle to it. To avoid errors due to parallax, a plane mirror is mounted below the compass needle. In operation, the instrument is first rotated until the magnetic field of the earth, indicated by the compass needle, is parallel with the plane of the coil. Then the unknown current is applied to the coil. This creates a second magnetic field on the axis of the coil, perpendicular to the Earth's magnetic field. The compass needle responds to the vector sum of the two fields, and deflects to an angle equal to the tangent of the ratio of the two fields. From the angle read from the compass's scale, the current could be found from a table. The current supply wires have to be wound in a small helix, like a pig's tail. Otherwise the field due to the wire will affect the compass needle and an incorrect reading will be obtained. Theory The galvanometer is oriented so that the plane of the coil is vertical and aligned along parallel to the horizontal component BH of the Earth's magnetic field. When an electric current flows through the galvanometer coil, a second magnetic field B is created. At the center of the coil, where the compass needle is located, the coil's field is perpendicular to the plane of the coil. The magnitude of the coil's field is where I is the current in amperes, N is the number of turns of the coil and R is the radius of the coil. These two perpendicular magnetic fields add vectorially, and the compass needle points along the direction of their resultant BH plus B. The current in the coil causes the compass needle to rotate by an angle theta. From tangent law, B equals BH tan theta, i.e., or or I equals K tan theta, where K is called the reduction factor of the tangent galvanometer. One problem with the tangent galvanometer is that its resolution degrades at both high currents and low currents. The maximum resolution is obtained when the value of theta is 45 degrees. When the value of theta is close to 0 degrees or 90 degrees, a large percentage change in the current will only move the needle a few degrees. Geomagnetic field measurement A tangent galvanometer can also be used to measure the magnitude of the horizontal component of the geomagnetic field. When used in this way, a low-voltage power source, such as a battery, is connected in series with a rheostat, the galvanometer, and an ammeter. The galvanometer is first aligned so that the coil is parallel to the geomagnetic field, whose direction is indicated by the compass when there is no current through the coils. The battery is then connected and the rheostat is adjusted until the compass needle deflects 45 degrees from the geomagnetic field, indicating that the magnitude of the magnetic field at the center of the coil is the same as that of the horizontal component of the geomagnetic field. This field strength can be calculated from the current as measured by the ammeter, the number of turns of the coil, and the radius of the coils. A static galvanometer The static galvanometer was developed by Leopoldo Nobili in 1825. The needle assembly is suspended by a silk thread and has no net magnetic dipole moment. It is not affected by the Earth's magnetic field. The lower needle is inside the current sensing coils and is deflected by the magnetic field created by the passing current. Mirror galvanometer Extremely sensitive measuring equipment once used mirror galvanometers that substituted a mirror for the pointer. A beam of light reflected from the mirror acted as a long, massless pointer. Such instruments were used as receivers for early transatlantic telegraph systems, for instance. The moving beam of light could also be used to make a record on a moving photographic film, producing a graph of current versus time, in a device called an oscillograph. 
The string galvanometer was a type of mirror galvanometer so sensitive that it was used to make the first electrocardiogram of the electrical activity of the human heart. Ballistic galvanometer A ballistic galvanometer is an instrument with a high moment of inertia, arranged so that its deflection is proportional to the total charge sent through the meter's coil. It is Darsenville type galvanometer however it doesn't show steady deflection owing through the transitor and nature of the current passing through it. Uses Part uses a major early use for galvanometers was for finding faults in telecommunications cables. They were superseded in this application late in the 20th century by time domain reflectometers. Probably the largest use of galvanometers was the Darsenville Western type movement used in analog meters in electronic equipment. Since the 1980s, galvanometer-type analog meter movements have been displaced by analog to digital converters for some uses. A digital panel meter contains an analog to digital converter and numeric display. The advantages of a digital instrument are higher precision and accuracy. But factors such as power consumption or cost may still favor application of analog meter movements. Galvanometer mechanisms were also used to position the pens in analog strip chart recorders such as used in electrocardiographs, electroencephalographs and polygraphs. Strip chart recorders with galvanometer-driven pens may have a full-scale frequency response of 100 Hz and several centimeters deflection. The writing mechanism may be a heated tip on the needle writing on heat-sensitive paper, or a hollow ink-fed pen. In some types the pen is continuously pressed against the paper, so the galvanometer must be strong enough to move the pen against the friction of the paper. In other types, such as the rust rack recorders, the needle is only intermittently pressed against the writing medium at that moment. An impression is made and then the pressure is removed, allowing the needle to move to a new position and the cycle repeats. In this case, the galvanometer need not be especially strong. Galvanometer mechanisms were also used in exposure mechanisms in film cameras. Modern uses Most modern uses for the galvanometer mechanism are in positioning and control systems. Galvanometer mechanisms are divided into moving magnet and moving coil galvanometers. In addition, they are divided into closed loop and open loop, or resonant, types. Mirror galvanometer systems are used as beam positioning or beam steering elements in laser scanning systems. For example, for material processing with high-power lasers, mirror galvanometer are typically high-power galvanometer mechanisms used with closed-loop servo control systems. The newest galvanometers designed for beam steering applications can have frequency responses over 10 kHz with appropriate servo technology. Closed-loop mirror galvanometers are also used in stereolithography, in laser sintering, in laser engraving, in laser beam welding, in laser TV, in laser displays, and in imaging applications such as optical coherence tomography retinal scanning. Almost all of these galvanometers are of the moving magnet type. Open loop or resonant mirror galvanometers are mainly used in laser-based barcode scanners in some printing machines, in some imaging applications, in military applications, and in space systems. Their non-lubricated bearings are especially of interest in applications that require a high vacuum. A galvanometer mechanism is used for the head positioning servos in hard disk drives and CD and DVD players. These are all of the moving coil type, in order to keep mass, and thus access times, as low as possible.